Hey you and welcome, my name is Mike, and in this old video we got a pop quiz hotshot. What happened in the suburbs of Atlanta in 2011? Oof, yeah, a lot of things, a lot of things I'm sure, and unfortunately we're not gonna get, you know, be able to get to all of them. But what we will be able to get to is the marriage of Matthew, Matt, and Dominique, Nikki, Lily. See, Matthew loved security cameras. He had over 20 of them in his own house. Paranoid much, or is your house just that interesting? So this would, you know, come in handy, uh, but unfortunately, not for him. And when something happened to Nikki, unlikely people would jump to Matthew's defense, his own daughters. So maybe not that unlikely. Phew. Let's give it a go. In 2011, Dominique, Nikki for short, Lily was 44 years old. Profession, corporate executive, a straight shooter who shot from the hip. Location, Lawrenceville, Georgia, just northeast of Atlanta. Nikki was married to Matt Lily, and together they had two children. Nikki had one from a previous relationship. And they also had an unhappy, turbulent marriage. Nikki was born in 1967. She had one sister, 10 years her junior, and grew up in South Carolina. By the time her late 20s swung around, she had already been married and not married twice and had one young daughter. Third time lucky, or uh, aiming for it at least, uh, she married a bloke from New York, Matt Lily. They married in 1998 and would have two daughters together. They moved around a bit, had stints in Oklahoma and Mississippi, and they would eventually end up where this story begins. In Lawrenceville, Georgia. Not the name, not the font, not the country, the state. Nikki worked in corporate finance while Matt, he did the old, uh, you know, uh, clickety clackety. Or is it the other one? I always forget. And it was on the 8th of July, very early hours of the 9th, that Nikki Lily disappeared from her home in the, well, in the middle of the night. Just poof. Two days later, Nikki was reported missing to the police. At the time, the police were like, ah, sure, you know, lads, here, come on. She's a grown woman. She probably left of her own accord. You're kind of, you're kind of shit out of luck here. However, that didn't stop the dozens of people searching for her in the brush and woods near the Lily home and handing out flyers. The search wouldn't go on for too long, however. It would only be five days after she was reported missing on the 16th of July, that two co-workers of Nikki's who wanted to help in the search, arriving late, saw some blonde hair, and found a naked body under some leaves less than a mile from the Lily home. Now this is besides the point, right? But Nikki's mother was there, you know, helping in the search. She was going door to door, handing out flyers and such. And when, you know, a body was found, at that very moment, a police officer was actually giving out to Nikki's mother. The police officer was giving out to Nikki's mother because someone had complained that she was going around handing out flyers of her missing daughter. Now, what kind of a rancid c do you have to be to complain to the police about somebody handing out flyers of their missing family member? Now, sorry, that's just actually completely besides the point, but that bothered me, like, a lot. After the body was discovered, 911 was called, and police, EMTs, the works arrived within minutes. Crime scene went up, and dental records would confirm it to be Nikki Lily. It looked like she had been out there for several days, and there were no obvious signs of injury or anything like that. In fact, there was very little to indicate what had actually happened. One thing, though, was that the bottoms of her feet were clean, indicating she hadn't walked through the brush and got herself there. Also, very strangely, an autopsy revealed she had high levels of GHB in her system, the date rape drug, and also semen. It seemed she had died around the time she went missing, but a positive cause of death was difficult to determine due to decomposition, but it was, it was more than likely strangulation. 
So, how'd she get there and what, uh, you know, could have happened? Well, in the days before her body was found, when the police were beginning to show kind of, you know, like a semblance of interest due to the large number of people who were searching for her, Nikki's husband, Matt, who hasn't really come up yet, he told the police that this wasn't, this was not the first time she upped and or you n n o f t would or at least threatened to. My wife has a long history of some kind of mental imbalances, okay? And I've been finding out the past two days, everything she's been telling me in therapy all these years has been a lie. This is not the first time she's run away, okay? She's run away and she's been gone for two hours, she's been gone for three hours, four hours one time, she's gone to work with a bag of clothes and then come back after work, you know, but she's never been gone overnight. Uh, she's not very happy with her life, she's never felt accepted, okay? We've been in and out of therapists, um, there's a fear of intimacy, you know, she's got no problem with girls, but when it comes to a male, they are a threat. They are, all my, all my life, guys have used me for sex. She yells at me in front of the kids. She throws things in front of me in front of the kids. And all I'm doing is sitting there going, please stop, please stop. Do you remember what the doctor said? Is this the person you want to be? Now, has she ever been bound? Yeah. Okay. I've got pictures of myself with bruises on me. I've got a, I, my father is a witness for her throwing a knife at my face. I'm 250 pounds, six foot five. She's 98 pounds soaking wet. I'm being beaten up by my wife. Who's going to believe me? See, as I said, their 13 years of marriage had its turbulent times. July 2011 was one of those, and of course, they had fought on the 8th of July when Nikki was last seen. That night, they had gone out for dinner, and, uh, well, Matt, he at least was hoping one thing might, uh, you know, lead to another. We had a great time. We, um, we came home. On the way home, I said to her, you know, hey, you know, you know, because I wanted sex. So I said to her, you know, hey, how about, you know, how about you put on an outfit? I think that might have set her off. Well, that fear of intimacy that I thought she was working on getting over was gone, but apparently that set her off because she picked the fight. They fought that night, and Matt's dad, who was visiting at the time, was a witness to it. Apparently, she didn't make Matt's dad feel welcome in their home. And when Matt's dad said this, Nikki went off even more. I mean, holy cow. She rips her shirt off with her t hanging out. No bra, nothing. And says, maybe we should just f gross her shirt on the floor. And then says, isn't that what family does? The fuck? My wife has done some weird That's the weirdest she's ever been. Anyways, in the early hours of the 9th of July, she went up to bed. Matt slept on the couch. I wake up about 6 o'clock to go to the bathroom. The light is on in the bedroom. I can see it upstairs. So I go upstairs to see what's going on. She's not there. I have a camera system in the house because I sell cameras with a DVR. And she always shuts it off when she leaves, when she's pissed off. Because she knows it pisses me off. And that's the last she was seen. Her purse, phone, car, etc., they were all still there. She didn't take them, seems like she just upped and left. He checked his home security system, and more on that later, don't you worry. And when he checked, it was turned off, so he didn't have any record of her leaving. So the investigation then kicked off, trying to uncover what really happened to Nikki. Was Matt telling the truth? And what the heck was the deal with his home security system? You know, I mean, these days it's pretty common to have, um, you know, some kind of uh, home cam, you got your, your ring cams, your like nest cams, yeah, pretty normal, a lot of people have them. But Matt, back in 2011, had 21 cameras in his house. Overkill, maybe. In fact, as you guessed, Matt was uh, a little <laughs> obsessed, you know, he had a little quirk. Uh, and he needed to know where everybody was at all times in his house. Like, he would just sit there for hours, just like, checking, what's up to... Hmm. Yes, fucking weird. Nikki's first daughter, the one from a previous relationship, had moved out because of this. And the fact that she didn't like Matt. And Matt didn't like the police. Not anymore. Not after he told them... Like, a lot. By the time the police notified him of Nikki's death, they found her body, he lawyered up. No more heart-to-hearts with the police over the phone. 
So considering the L uh, security system he had, the police got a search warrant to basically get get it all so they could go through it and maybe piece together some kind of timeline. Maybe they could learn a little bit more about that fight they had. But one thing they did learn about Nikki was that, you know, remember Matt saying she was like a nut job and all this stuff? My wife has done some weird shit. That's the weirdest she's ever been. Nikki's family, her sister, who she had a very close relationship, were, uh, no. Not at all. That doesn't sound like, that sounds like a fictitious person. In fact, nearly all of Nikki's family were suspicious of Matt, a Matt that had waited two days before reporting Nikki missing. And that included Nikki's daughter that had moved out, because, well, she didn't like Matt. And Matthew, she would tell the police that uh, this, this Urukai looking motherfucker, Matt Flesh, he would lock Nikki in bathrooms. He was controlling. He hid audio recorders in Nikki's purse and tracked her phone. He had a camera in the living room facing the couch so that when, well, you ain't watching TV, TV's watching you. This uh, raised eyebrows from the police and the semen that was found on Nikki's body turned out to be Matt's. They had seized footage from the house, more than half a million video clips. It took months, as you can imagine, and they found nothing. In fact, the only thing of relevance they could uncover at that point was the last footage of Nikki, just after midnight on July 9th, having a cigarette on the front porch. After that, the security footage suddenly stops. Now remember, Matt, he told the police that Nikki must have turned it off when she left, right? As, you know, Nikki would know that would really boil Matt's bollocks. But, uh, not so. Actually, uh, the files were there. They were just corrupted, so uh, you couldn't get anything useful out of them. Well, you know, isn't that funny? Hilarious! Even that Matt, you know, he had 21 cameras all around the house, you know, that he said he had set up, you know, to keep an eye on his, as he would say, his crazy wife, you know, he needed them to keep an eye on her and what she was doing. I'm recording my wife, I've got a tracker on her, you know, I gotta find my wife every time she runs away. I mean, I'm not some over-possessive freak. The one time something happens, the one time they're needed, the footage is Huber. Typical. But that was that for the time being. Seven months later, in February 2012, Matt eventually left Georgia with his two kids, moved back up north to be close to his family. What happened to Nikki Liley became a cold case. In the summer of 2012, a new detective would take over. And that would lead to another discovery on Matt's computer. The police still had it. Thousands and thousands of audio files that had been missed the first time around. Also, the corrupted video footage from the night Nikki disappeared. It wasn't corrupted. Well, okay, it, it was corrupted, but it was like, purposely corrupted. Somebody had run, somebody, yeah. Uh, had run some kind of software on the footage that basically fucking made shite of it. They had done that twice to ensure nobody could see anything. The audio recordings were, well, recordings of a lot of fights between Matt and Nikki. This is what I live day in and day out, is keep my mouth shut, my head down, and do exactly what's expected of me. That's not what I said and how I said it, and don't take my words out of context. When we got in that damn car, damn it, 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 oh, your voice. And not only that, 12 days before she went missing, Nikki had called 911. My name is Kenny 911. Yes, my husband won't let me leave the house. My wife, is, my wife is yelling and screaming and just woke up the children. Officers came out, offered to take her to safety, but when they spoke with her, she wouldn't look at him, she wouldn't leave, not without her children. Now, what happened was that she did eventually leave, but Matt got the youngest child, call Nikki, and get her to come back. Hey, Molly. Hey, baby, how are you? Good. Mommy, we need to go on vacation. All of us as a family. We need to save this family.
In March 2015, Matt Liley came back to Georgia. There was a civil suit regarding Nikki's life insurance payout, and little did Matt know that the Gwinnett County Courthouse was packed with plainclothes police officers waiting to arrest him. Matt was charged with murder, sexual assault, and eavesdropping, which is punishable by one to five years in prison. 11 Alive posted the story. Good. How many hits? The, um, so far the video has like 120 something views, but the, the article is Lila's daughters break silence and mom's murder. Okay. Make sure at the news conference you say, we're tired of false allegations. We're going to tell you the truth about what really happened so that you, so that you don't believe any of these lies. All right. Tell them that you know, you're going to be doing what you can to let the truth out. All right. All these years we were told to be silent. We can't be silent anymore. Okay. My, dad, my dad is now in jail because of these false allegations. It's time we tell the truth. That's even better. Okay. We were told to be silent to protect our mommy's image, but now we can't because my dad is in jail and we have to let the truth out. Yes, sir. And it's time that and it's time everyone knows the truth and stop believing these false allegations from this, you know, say something insulting from this uh, uh, pathological lying family that doesn't want their dirty laundry aired. But the truth will come yes, sir. out. But the truth will come out. Yes, sir. Make sure you tell people. We have set up a YouTube channel to tell you the truth about what happened in our home. Okay. Don't forget to tell everybody about the YouTube site because we want it on TV. Okay? Okay. Love you, baby girl. Good luck today. I love you too. So, that was Matt in jail for now. But, uh, interestingly, his daughters were the ones who came to his defense uploading, you know, videos to YouTube. I mean, as we just heard at his behest, you know, coming to his defense. I was always happy and loving and most of the time my mom was traveling and she would travel, she would leave Sunday night and come back Friday night and then the weekend she would spend at home and then she'd leave again Sunday night. So my dad was mostly the one taking care of us and driving us back and forth, basketball games and acting classes and school and any after school activities we had. And when my mom was home, we would always play games. We would just relax. Um, we would go swimming. We would um, play outside with our friends and hang out with the neighbors. And it was always happy and loving and caring and just we had a really good childhood. They came out saying it was their mother's family that wanted Matt put away, that Nikki, their own mother, was the violent one. They never liked my dad and I've been reading things online, I've been watching the news, and I can see the hatred that they have for my dad, and it's just ridiculous, the lies they're spreading. Tonight, the couple's daughters are citing bad blood with their mother's family and defend their father. Honestly, we can't wait to face this family in court and call out their lies, and they've done nothing but cause us pain and torment, and... Our day in court will come, and hopefully my dad will be able to come home. That went so well that he either privated or removed all videos on the channel. And so, I mean, yeah, it seems pretty obvious that Matt was the master manipulator. I mean, it's hard not to, you know, feel sorry or understand why his children would put up videos, though, coming, you know, to support him. They'd already lost, you know, one parent, and it seemed like they might lose their dad as well as he was, you know, now in jail. They were up, you know, up north with him for years, God knows what he was telling them and manipulating them, and I guess if they didn't come out and support their dad, then that would just confirm that he had killed Nikki. So, moving on. In January 2016, Matt's murder trial began. Lawyers are questioning the final potential jurors in the trial of a man who prosecutors say murdered his wife. The family of Dominique Laley found her body in the woods days after she disappeared in 2011. Her daughters insist their father did nothing wrong. The prosecution basically went with, Matt was a lazy, controlling piece of shit. Nikki was the breadwinner, and they were in debt. 300 big ones. The murder was just the biggest way he could control her. 
He drugged her, assaulted her, and killed her. There would be times when she would, um, they'd be arguing and he would end up locking her in a bathroom. Um, she'd been shoved downstairs. Um, there were several nights that I would lay up at night and listen to her say, please get off of me, get off of me, you're hurting me. And in court, they played more of those recorded fights. Let the record show I am now locked in a room again. I don't want to be here. I don't want to have this conversation. I've asked out of it. The record show that she's being an absolute <laughs> wants her way no matter what. I know that when we go two days without sex, you're going to automatically assume I am on strike mode no matter what else is happening. Don't touch me. Sit down if you want to sit down. I'm reaching out to you. I don't want to hold your hand right now. Our hands are around my throat. My hands were not on your throat. I don't care what the f you think. My throat, they were around. Don't get into your head. They were not around your throat. Stop telling that story like that. Bull. You threatened to kill me. You telling me you should have killed me, putting your hands around my throat? I should have let you kill yourself. Why should I bother being the one to do it? What's different about that statement, Matt? Because I'm not going to jail for you. I never said I was going to kill you. And though they couldn't recover the corrupted footage, so they didn't exactly know what happened the very early morning she was killed and went missing. The fact that they were purposely corrupted was, well, evidence enough. The defense went with, well, they have evidence of a troubled marriage, but nothing beyond that. All circumstantial. The recorded fights, cherry picked. Please, don't do this. Please, you, Nikki. Please. You do not want to do this with me right now. I mean it. You do not want to tangle with me right now at all what did i do by the way they were pretty much all from 2008 2009 so you know years before she actually went missing and he'd only recorded them at the suggestion of a marriage counselor also when nikki went missing you know in those two days when she went missing and he reported her reported her missing he had tried to file for divorce now he wasn't serious about doing it but he wanted to threaten her, you know, with it, if she came back, which maybe he knew she wouldn't. And he also wanted to have, like, a court order to take her away to a, to a mental health institute. Things that events would say are not the actions of a killer. And what about the good parts of their marriage? A year before Nikki's death, they went to Hawaii and renewed their vows. Matt's dad, who witnessed the fight the day Nikki disappeared, took the stand and told them what he saw. She tore off her, uh top and says come on let's go let's f like a family were you expecting any sort of comment like this never i expect never when the two daughters took the stand they said nikki had the anger not matt and she took a heel and threw it and i myself had to duck from it was it being thrown at your dad? Yes. After three hours, the jury came back with the verdict. I'm going to ask you at this time if you would stand and read the verdict out loud. As to count one, we the jury found the defendant guilty of malice murder. Mr. Uh, Lally, is there anything you want to say? I didn't do it, and I'll be found on appeal. I am going to follow the state's recommendation uh, as to count one, have you sentenced uh, to life without the possibility of parole. And that's the uh, story of that one. In 2019, Matt's appeal was rejected, so he will remain for life, with life, in prison. As usual, I guess in all the stories we talk about, there's, there's two sides, and we only ever really get one. Because, uh, well, you know. And it's always the worst when it's parents here with children who, who end up killing each other. Because that just creates orphans and tear, tears families apart. I mean, it's a cliché. But it's true, at the end of the day, it always, you know, the children who were left trying to pick up the pieces. And how can that not mess you up for life? You know? But sure, what can you do? You know, it's just like, for fuck's sake. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. I will see you as always real soon in the next one. Take care of yourselves. Mike out.